Oh my god, you guys. We finally found the tool that takes the cake. Welcome to Indie, which has quickly become my most favorite tool for freelancers. I want to talk to you about why. Like any tool, you know that I'm really big into trying tools for free that allow you to get a good test run before you decide to upgrade. Indie's pretty good in that you can send two contracts, two invoices. You can still connect all of your tasks to your calendar. You can chat with other teammates if you have other teammates. Um, and if you do decide to upgrade, they come in at $5.99 a month, making this one of the most robust and cheapest tools for freelancers on the market today. But don't just take my word for it, friend. We're going to dive into what makes this so good. If you're brand brand new, you're going to enter your email here and click start for free. They'll get you all set up. And if you're not that new, we're going to go ahead and sign in. So here's the Indie dashboard. We've got on the left hand side a whole bunch of stuff that we can do with our projects. We can start adding tasks that we need to do. We can upload documents. We can start tracking our time, sending invoices, creating new projects. Oh my. So where do we even start? Like anything, if you are brand new or starting with a new, never before worked with client, you're going to want to start with a contract. I said it before and I said it again, never start work without creating a contract. I don't care if it's your best friend, without a contract, you do risk being screwed out of receiving payment or you set yourself up for failure if you've not created a contract that clearly stipulates things like your scope of work, when you want to get paid, what kind of work you're doing to get paid for, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So something I like about Indie is that we have a bunch of templates to use. So if you're a general freelancer, you're a designer, you're a developer, there's all sorts of templates you can use. Everything that's yellow is custom to you. It's specific to your details. This is your name. It will be your address. It will list the consultant, AKA the client that you have already updated in this platform. So in order to fill out some of these other terms, including scope of work, how much you will be charging, we have to fill out some of this info first on the left-hand side. So here you see we're at description of services. What are you, the consultant, being hired to do for the client? Well, if you're a VA, here's where we can fill out our scope of work. Once you've got your specific services, and I do recommend that you are as specific as possible, go ahead and hit save and continue. Next, we're gonna fill out when the project starts. Now, if you're a VA, you've got two options. We can either start on a specific date, maybe you and your client have agreed to start on the first of the month, or you both can sign the contract and your work can get started immediately. The nice thing about end time, by the way, is that you can choose when either party chooses to end it. That means this contract is ongoing and long term and that either you or your client can choose to end the contract whenever you guys want. The best part about this is this inclusion here is that both parties can end without a reason, but the ending party must provide a written notice for the other party within, and then you get to choose that. When I've dropped clients before, I've typically given them a two week heads up. Moving on, we can do a flat rate, an hourly rate, a monthly rate. So for me, a flat and a monthly, I use those terms interchangeably. But if you're a VA working with a long-term client, you're going to want to indicate a monthly rate you can require a deposit if you want. It's not typical for virtual assistants to require a deposit. I find that deposits are more for creative type services. So if you're, if you're strictly hired, for example, for video editing and you're charging somebody $900 to edit a video for them, you might want to charge half up front. That way you get the first half so you can start working and the second half is due upon receipt. But for most VAs, I'm going to go ahead and say no. And then here, how long does the client have to pay you? I typically do payment due upon receipt. Uh, you can give them one day if that's a grace period. Having said that, I have also had clients who work for big Fortune 500 companies. Those companies require a 14 day lead time. So ask your client if they're part of a big company, ask them if they have any sort of stipulation about um, a net, it's typically called a net so net 14, net 30, that just means how many days do they have to pay you? Uh, and if you're working with a solo person, ask them if it's appropriate that they pay you immediately. Expenses is a good option too. Who pays expenses related to the project? Typically, as virtual assistants, 
clients will pay for work-related expenses. Now, what this means since we're virtual is, for example, if your client wants you to do social media management for them and you end up needing to purchase something like Hootsuite or Buffer or Later.com, any sort of planning service that allows you to post regularly, you shouldn't have to pay for that because that's not your business. Your client should pay for that. Then we're off to review. This is everything that we've gone through in the contract together. If it all looks good to you, you're gonna go ahead and sign it first. You can also send yourself a copy of the contract and then you're gonna go ahead and send it. This is what the client sees, by the way, when you send them a contract. It's pretty easy to view. It opens up in a new window. Your client will look through the details. If they have no concerns about the contract that you're sending, they're gonna go up to the top and click sign. They'll fill out their legal name, confirm signature. Once you've got that contract out of the way, let's look at a couple of the other features. I know I talked at length about that contract, but to be honest, that's the most important thing about freelancing. So here we can track tasks, we can add tags. Uh, so this could be client specific and you can add due dates, which will pop up in your calendar. And there it is. Time trackers. When you're tracking a new time, you'll just enter what you're tracking here. If you've forgotten to track something, you can also add the time manually. When you've stopped, when you've started, you can add details about the project and the rate. Your tracker, by the way, is also accessible at the top bar over here. Something I do wanna point out is files. So the reason that I like this file so much is because it pretty much doubles as a Dropbox or your Google Drive. So what you can do is actually upload, I mean, it tells you right here, you can upload files and documents, and then you can add your client as somebody who can access those files. So the reason that I like this is because it's super secure. You can share it with your client. You can denote what they can do. View and comment is usually the thing that you wanna do. And when you upload your files, you'll see the file name down here when it eventually uploads. There we go. So you'll see the file name here, and you'll see who it's shared with. So this would be your client. What makes this so cool is that if you are working on something like graphics for your client and you need approval, the approval process goes right to their inbox. So rather than you sending them some big digital file for them to look at, they just open this email in their inbox. Indie will open up on a separate tab. They'll be able to look at the design that you've created or whatever it is that you've shared with them. And then they can add a comment. Looks good, let it fly. So Indy definitely gets another major thumbs up for me for making file sharing so much easier. Last thing I wanna point out is forms. So I have an onboarding process that I've talked about before uh, via Typeform, but with Indy, I no longer need to use Typeform at all because Indy serves as my new client onboarding process. So under the free plan, you only get two free forms a month, but I wanna show you what these look like. Uh, client onboarding is a great example. This gets all of their details, their company name, their address, their email, their legal info, as in, are they a freelancer themselves? Are they incorporated? What is your preferred method for, say, uh, for paying invoices? Is there anything that you need me to know? What's your preferred communication? I mean, these questions are the exact questions that I ask my own clients when we work together. And I think Indie does an amazing job of starting you on a really solid basis. So if you do like a form like this, you can use this template. All right, so now that this is published, you might be saying, that's cool, but now what do I do with it? When you go to the share option, we have a shareable link, which you can add on your social media. You can put this link into your email uh, signature, like, hey, um, maybe underneath your name and number, something like, hey, if you wanna work with me, fill out this form. When you upgrade to a paid account, you can also embed this form on your website. So overall, I know I talk about a lot of different tools. Does Indie make the cut? Will I start using this for my own business? The answer is a resounding yes, I will. So tell me what you guys think. This was a long tutorial. What do you guys think about this tool? Are you gonna start using it? And if you already do, what have I missed? That's all I've got for you guys this week. Thank you for spending your time with me. I wish you nothing but happiness and success for your business.